That was Mr. Claremont Mingo's wife as she exited the Georgetown Magistrates Court on Monday morning. Her husband, who served as the Region 4 returning officer during the March 2nd elections, was slapped with four charges of misconduct in public office. He was placed on $150,000 bail on each charge, amounting to $600,000 in total. As he appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, supporters turned out in their numbers outside chanting, Free Mingo! They were supported by leaders of the APNU-AFC, including former President David Granger and incoming opposition leader Joseph Harmon. Granger addressed supporters outside the magistrate's court. The persecution of election officers. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Mingo mm -hmm. is not a child. Mr. Mingo has rights. He is not a flight risk. He's not going to run away from this country. He's been here all the time. Why a peaceful, modest man, mature man. We ask him to be released from custody so that he can rejoin his family. It is inhumane for him to be treated the way he's being treated. And we ask that this matter not be politicized. The embattled Mingo emerged as a key figure in the elections when a national recount of votes proved that he inflated his figures in the Guyana's largest voting district to give the former APNU AFC government a victory at the polls. Mingo was arrested by the police on August 25th at his Calcutta Maikoni East Coast Demerara home as police probe electoral fraud. Mingo was represented by attorney at law Nigel Hughes, Ronald Daniels and Darren Wade. Wade disclosed that Mingo has to also lodge his passport and report to the Criminal Investigations Department weekly. He's also to report every Friday at 9 a.m. to Mr. Mitchell Novar Caesar. Um, this was after an objection by the um, member of the DPP who represented DPP here this morning. He objected on the basis of a statement that the premise of his objection, of a statement made by um, the former Prime Minister, Mr. Bruce Golding. Utter nonsense. Um, there was also an objection that Mr. Mingo may want to tamper or may want to approach members of the police investigation who, or persons who have to submit statement. The magistrate said to him there's no evidence of that, so she cannot act upon that. The state was represented by Prosecutor Tariq Mohammed and Police Prosecutor Shalon Daniels, who told the court that Mingo's conduct posed a great disrespect to the people of Guyana. They also objected to bail. Meanwhile, two GCOM employees, Enrique Livan, was slapped with one charge of fraud relating to the March 2nd elections, while Sheffer in February faced two charges of conspiracy to commit fraud. The duo who served as assistant registration officers during the elections were represented by attorneys at law UC Anderson, Latoya Roberts and Nigel Hughes. The charge relating to Livan detailed that he altered figures on the statements of poll from the elections, while the charges against February state that she did not use figures from the statements of poll, which resulted in a false declaration being made for the general and regional elections. This February was charged with two counts of attempt to defraud the people of Guyana. In, that in her position as a clerk, she would have read the wrong numbers from the SOPs during the March 2020 elections. The charges are exactly the same, only thing the court, they separated it for the regional and for the general elections. While Mr. Livan was charged with manipulating the numbers of the SOPs that were recorded in the system so that they reflected fraudulent numbers for District 4, and therefore it resulted in a fraudulent result being recorded for the said district. Uh, Both of these persons have had their constitutional rights breached significantly. Both of these persons have been incarcerated be beyond the con they, they've been incarcerated beyond the constitutionally permissible period of 72 hours. We also have some other clients who are in that similar position. Secondly, I want to make something very clear. At no point in time has Mr. Livan admitted any of the allegations made against him. Mr. Livan is innocent of the allegations made against him. February was granted $150,000 bail on each charge, totaling $300,000 while Livan was granted $150,000 bail on his charge. Livan became known after he was involved in a flash drive scandal on March 5th at the Ashman's building, where it is alleged that he unlawfully altered the figures of the statements of poll to defraud the state of Guyana. They are all expected to reappear in court on September 25th. Bibi Katoon reporting for the newsroom.